In this episode of the NBC comedy The Office, the character of Dwight teaches Aaron how to speak Dothraki. Dothraki is the native tongue of the nomadic, warmongering horse lords of Essos. I throat rip. False again, Doc. You throat rip. False again, G. He, she, it throat rips. False again, Doc. More of a barbaric growl. False again, Doc. Louder, you're shouting it from the back of a horse. What? UCSD grad David Peterson was delighted when he saw that episode. He's a fan of The Office. He also created the Dothraki language for HBO's Game of Thrones. Peterson recently visited his alma mater to talk with students in the linguistics department. Before the lecture, he explained why he enjoys building a language from scratch. When you're creating a language, if you're going to do it you know, responsibly, if you're going to try to really create something that's authentic, it's one of the most intellectually rigorous exercises I've ever undertaken. And, uh, and to me, that's really the appeal. Peterson started with the source material for the TV show, George R.R. R. Martin's series of epic fantasy novels, A Song of Ice and Fire. The Dothraki culture guided Peterson in creating the words. With Dothraki, I remember one of the first words I coined was uh, the word for horse, which was Hrazef. The Dothraki are expert riders, and horses are central to their culture. Peterson also created a phonetic and grammatical structure for the language. I kept in mind uh, what it was that English speakers would be expecting uh, uh, from the language, and also, you know, what would sound, uh, you know, what would sound cool, what would sound menacing, and that means something different. Uh, for an English speaker than it does for somebody who's a native speaker of Arabic or Japanese or Chinese. Uh, so I was working with kind of uh, the expectations of English speakers in mind. Peterson met George R.R. R. Martin at a book signing in San Diego. That's when he realized he got one crucial pronunciation wrong. I'm like, oh, that's George R.R. R. Martin. Should I introduce myself? And then I just said, hi, uh, you know, my name is David Peterson. I'm like, hi, I'm the guy that did the Dothraki language. And he's like, oh, so you're the one that did Dothraki. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I was uh, way off. I would never have guessed that. Space, the final frontier. Creating fictional languages for TV shows and movies became popular after the success of Star Trek's Klingon. Grant Goodall teaches language construction at UCSD. He says Klingon set a high bar for Hollywood. So now that seems to be the, the new normal. If you're going to have a science fiction series or fantasy series, that you have to have, and you're, if you're going to have some alien tribe or some alien species, uh, they have to have their own language. And it can't just be gibberish that the actors make up on the spot. It has to be something that is created with some care. Goodall speaks Esperanto, which dates back to the 19th century. Lo saluton, uh, mi nomo estas Grant. Esperanto was designed to be easy to learn in the hope it would be adopted all over the world. Its goals were lofty, to achieve universal brotherhood. Goodall started studying it at 13 when he joined an Esperanto club in San Francisco. Today, there are anywhere between 500,000 and 2 million Esperanto speakers. It's one of the most successful and enduring constructed languages. But Goodall's command of Esperanto doesn't stop him from dabbling in Klingon, Nuknech, Dothraki, Math, or Navi, Kalt. the language in the movie Avatar. Most linguists like Goodall and Peterson end up teaching in universities, but Peterson has carved out a real niche for himself. He's created another fictional language for the latest season of Game of Thrones. And the Sci-Fi Network hired him to create an alien language for the show Defiance. Meanwhile, Peterson hopes to build the Dothraki language to 10,000 words. If you're going to do it right, if you're going to be creating a language, it pretty much, uh, I mean, if you're going to really put your all into it, it can pretty much take up your entire life. <laughs> Angela Carone, KPBS News.